Odd But True presents the eight most important animals in history. We humans have an odd relationship with animals, and I'm not just talking about what your weird Uncle Steve does in the middle of the night when he thinks nobody's watching. Humans treat animals with various levels of respect based on how they serve us or how delicious they are. The animals we ride into battle, they are noble steeds. The ones we mince up into hot dogs, they were just lying around waiting to be food. But every so often, there's an animal so important, so heroic, or just so damn charming that it changes our opinion drastically. Animals have played a huge role in shaping the world today as we know it. So here are what we think are the eight most important animals in history. Number one, the sheep with three moms. Dolly the sheep was the first mammal ever cloned using an adult animal cell. She was born on the 5th of July 1996 using an egg from one sheep, DNA from another, and was incubated inside the womb of a third sheep. Mother's Day must have been really expensive. The reason she was so important was that her existence proved cloning using adult cells was possible, as previously it was thought you could only clone using embryonic cells. We now use the same techniques used to clone Dolly in many important areas of medical science, leading to potentially life-saving cures for a range of diseases. But forget the serious stuff. Here's the fun part. Dolly was cloned using a cell from another sheep's mammary gland, and this is how she got her name. Mammary glands are located in animal udders and human breasts, and the scientists who cloned Dolly couldn't think of a more suitably boobalicious celebrity to name her after than Dolly Parton. See? Even super smart science guys like a set of giant cans. Dolly sadly died on the 14th of February 2003, aged 6. However, her legacy lives on in the medical advancements we enjoy today, and may enjoy in the future. So. When you guys are all 93 years old, waiting for your brain to be transplanted into your newly cloned young body, you can thank a British sheep named after a country singer with giant boobs. Number 2. The Inspiring Spider If you've seen the movie Braveheart, you'll know that William Wallace was a Scottish hero who tried and failed to gain independence from the English. But Braveheart was actually the nickname given to a man called Robert the Bruce, a Scottish leader who helped kick off the Scottish War of Independence against England. Without him, Britain and the world would look quite differently, and Robert the Bruce's entire legacy was inspired by a meeting with a spider. Robert the Bruce suffered a lot of defeats early on in his fight for freedom, and after one particularly terrible battle, he sought refuge in a cave on Rathlin Island. In the cave, he saw a spider trying to build a web across the wall of the cave, only for the harsh winter winds to destroy its work each time. Yet every single day, the spider again tried to build its web, and one day, the spider succeeded. Robert the Bruce was inspired by this intrepid spider to keep on fighting the English for independence, and even though it took him nearly 20 years, his role as king of an independent Scotland was eventually confirmed by Pope John the 22nd in 1324. Just imagine how things might have turned out if instead of watching the spider, he just smashed it with a rolled up newspaper. Number 3 the hobo space dog. Laika was just an ordinary stray dog wandering the streets of Moscow until one day some Russians fired her into space like a giant doggy bottle rocket. Laika, whose name means Barker in Russian, because Russians sure are original, became the very first animal to orbit Earth when she was launched above the Soviet Union's Sputnik 2 spacecraft. But sadly, her story didn't have a happy ending. For years, the Soviets claimed Laika had been euthanized on board Sputnik, just before her oxygen ran out, because at that time we knew how to fire rockets into the sky, but nobody could figure out how to bring them back. Laika's mission was always going to cost her life, but in 2002, it was revealed that the spacecraft overheating was the real cause of her death. Hot dog. There is now a statue and a plaque commemorating Laika at Star City, Russia, but Laika's legacy involves far more than that, because the mission completed by this brave spacefaring pooch led to the discovery that if protected properly, living creatures could survive in space. And without her sacrifice, we wouldn't have had a space race, a first man in space, a first man on the moon, and nor would we have the movie Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks and Kevin Bacon. And what kind of horrible world would that be? Number 4. The Monkeys Responsible for a Massacre Look at this cute little fella. He couldn't hurt anyone, surely. Unless it was from being so cheeky. Was it that? Was that how two monkeys killed 250,000 people? No. No, it wasn't. In 1920, the King of Greece, Alexander I, was taking a casual stroll through his garden, when suddenly his dog got into a fight with a monkey. The king did as any pet owner would and tried to protect his dog by shooing away the monkey. But little did he know, another monkey was laying in wait. The secret monkey assassin lunged at the king and bit him, and it was an infection from this bite which eventually killed King Alexander I. Now, after his death, Alexander was replaced as King of Greece by his father Constantine. Constantine had already been King of Greece, but was forced to abdicate during the First World War by the British and the French. 
mostly because they feared he would support the Germans instead of them. But when Constantine returned to the throne after World War I, he decided Greece hadn't had enough war and he invaded Turkey. But since Britain and France weren't too keen to help him, the Greeks got their asses kicked. The Greek army lost 250,000 soldiers in the conflict, a conflict which would never have happened if a certain cheeky monkey didn't start a beef with a Greek king's dog. Number five, the pig that changed the world. Pigs have given us some amazing things. Bacon, sausages, pork chops, babe, babe two pig in the city. Oh, and democracy. Yep, millions of people around the world enjoy democracy today thanks to a little French porker who lived nearly a millennia ago. Well, it was 887 years ago to be precise, but that's still a long time for such a little swine to remain relevant. So what happened? In 1129, King Philip of France was riding his horse when a small black pig ran out in front of him. If Philip was in a car, that pig would have ended up as nothing more than streaky bacon. But because Philip was on a horse, he was thrown from the saddle and killed. What happened next is quite complicated, so let's boil it down to something even a pig could understand. Philip's death meant that Louis VIII became King of France. Louis was raised as a monk, so he was unable to have sex with his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine. So Eleanor divorced Louis and married King Henry II of England. One of their sons became King John of England. King John was such a massive jerk to his subjects that the people of England rose up and forced him to sign the Magna Carta, the first document in the English-speaking world which had ever forced a king to do as his subjects wished. The Magna Carta's guarantee of individual liberties helped to shape law and democracy in the territories of the British Empire centuries later and had a huge impact on the American Constitution. So, the next time you go to vote, just remember that you owe your democratic rights to a little French pig. Number 6. The Dog That Started a Church you may know the English King Henry VIII for his fun habit of beheading his wives when they couldn't give him a son. King Henry was basically out Joffreying Joffrey centuries before Joffrey was even a thing. King Henry desperately wanted a male heir to the throne, and would ditch a lady by any means necessary to get what he wanted. Henry's first wife was Catherine of Aragon, but when she failed to pop out any tiny little men, Henry decided he wanted a divorce. Now, at the time, divorce wasn't as easy as it is now. These days you'll see celebrity couples get together, get hitched and get divorced all before brunch. But back in the 15th century, if you were Catholic, you had to get permission from the actual Pope. To obtain his divorce permission slip, King Henry sent his most trusted churchy guy, Cardinal Wolseley, all the way to Rome to speak to Pope Clement VII. The Pope was well aware that Henry was an explosive character and might break away from the Catholic Church if he didn't get what he wanted. So the Pope decided to play ball. But just before he was able to grant Henry a divorce, something odd happened. For some reason, Cardinal Wolseley brought along his pet greyhound to the meeting with the Pope. Maybe King Henry was dyslexic and he wrote the Cardinal a note that said, Take with you the blessings of almighty dog. Anyway, as the Cardinal was about to kiss the Pope's foot as a sign of respect, the greyhound jumped on the Pope and bit him. The Pope was understandably angry. In fact, he was so furious, he then refused to allow Henry to divorce Catherine of Aragon. Henry decided to do it anyway, but the only way he could achieve this was by setting up the Church of England, a branch of Christianity which remains strong to this day, but only exists thanks to a dog that hates popes. Number seven, the real war horse. It's tough enough to survive the horrors of war when you're a human who knows what's going on, but how could an animal possibly cope in such a violent and frightening situation? Well, surprisingly, some animals are extremely calm in the midst of battle, and one such heroic beast made a huge difference during the Korean War. The Korean War of 1950 to 1953 was a demoralizing one for the American soldiers battling on behalf of South Korea. Thousands of young men were far from home fighting in a conflict that they didn't understand or really want to be in, but one thing which always cheered them up was the sight of a small Mongolian horse called Reckless. Reckless was bought for only $250 by a Marine Corps lieutenant and officially served in the US Army from 1952. Her job was to deliver ammo to the front lines, which she did many times under constant enemy fire. During one battle, she delivered ammo 51 times to the American servicemen in the middle of a ferocious fight, so you can understand why those Marines were more than happy to see her. If the next Call of Duty doesn't replace care packages with a tiny horse delivering ammo drops, I am going to be disappointed. Reckless was actually promoted to Staff Sergeant twice in her career and received a number of medals including two Purple Hearts, a Presidential Unit Citation and a United Nations Service Medal. Although, the rewards she enjoyed the most were probably all the candy bars, cokes and beers given to her by the grateful men she served. Semper Fole, Reckless. Semper Fole. Number 8. The Cat That Nommed a Species the Stevens Island Wren was a flightless bird which was once abundant throughout New Zealand and its surrounding islands. 
However, as its name suggests, it eventually came to live on just one island, Stevens Island, and it was there that this poor, innocent species came to meet its doom. In 1894, a new lighthouse keeper moved to Stevens Island and brought along his cat, Tibbles. Tibbles decided that the Stevens Island wren would make a lovely gift for his owner, so every so often, he would bring back a dead one to his master's feet. Now, you or I may not appreciate such a disgusting present, but Tibble's owner actually thought these birds were pretty interesting, and he sent their chewed up bird bodies back off to Britain to be studied. So imagine his surprise when a letter came back from Britain on a supply ship years later, a letter which said that the birds that Tibble had been terrorising were actually a brand new species. At this point, the lighthouse keeper probably thought it was a good idea to stop his cat eating them all to save some for the rest of the world, but by then it was too late. Tibbles had murdered every last one, and the Stevens Island Wren was never to be seen again. Bad Kitty. So, those were the eight most important animals in history. You might think your cute pet kitty or doggy is the bestest thing in the whole wide world, but compared to these guys, your pet is basically a complete loser. Or is it? Who knows what your animal will achieve later in life? Could your dog be the first to orbit Mars? Will your hamster kill the Pope? Or maybe, just maybe your pet guinea pig will set off a chain of events that destroys the universe. Just look at their evil faces and tell me they're not thinking about it.